While best known for its products for the home and car, Bose entered the medical device industry over a year ago with the launch of its Bose Frames. What looks like an ordinary pair of sunglasses is actually a class one medical device product that works like a pair of headphones, but with UV protection properties. With both commercial and medical divisions, Bose needed to digitally transform itself quickly to eliminate silos, speed up products to market, and meet safety regulations. In today's webinar, presenters from Bose will explain how they leveraged best practices from each division using PLM software for enterprise-wide quality governance. Today's presenters are Eric Pettis, Head of Quality Assurance and Regulatory Affairs for Bose Health. Eric was brought on to lead Bose on their medical device journey. Prior to joining Bose, Eric had extensive quality and regulatory experience with a wide array of global design and manufacturing companies across multiple industries with a heavy emphasis on medical. Presenting with Eric is Michael Prudhomme, Director of Quality, Risk, and Reliability Solutions for PTC. Michael has over 30 years of experience directing the development validation, and support of quality management and regulatory compliance systems. You can find out more about our speakers by clicking on the blue speaker bio widget on your console. With that, let's get started. Eric, I will hand things over to you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you all today and to go into a little bit of detail about Bose's journey in becoming a medical device company. We'll talk about the challenges that we faced, the solutions that we implemented, the results, and like anything, this is a journey. And then we can finish off with uh, what the future holds for us. So it was back uh, July 23rd that I had my first day at Bose. It was a calm uh, day, went through orientation, got some free product, went home early, and then came in the next day for my first day where I found out that they wanted me to implement a quality management system to meet the FDA requirements to launch a, a medical device in 90 days. And uh, when I uh, pulled my jaw back up off the floor, I started to think about this. Uh, we had engaged uh, a consultant before my hire uh, and a team of six to seven consultants came in for about a seven to eight week engagement. And they did a gap of Bose to the, the medical requirements. And as you're probably aware, the requirements for uh, designing and manufacturing and marketing medical devices is federal law, 21 Code of Federal Regulations 820. And so uh, the gap resulted in about 600 action items. And I was told that the next day uh, the consultant would be presenting to our execs and a steering team of over 60 people uh, the results of their findings. And like anything, you know, I looked through the 600 actions and consultants do a pretty good job, but, you know, they sometimes can uh, create complexity. And I saw some opportunities to, uh, to, to lean out the whole process and, and implement a phased approach. Uh, but I was kind of thrown into the deep end of the pool, and uh, that was exactly uh, the verbiage that my new boss uh, put into his welcoming email to me. And I'll always remember it. He said, uh, you know, welcome to Bose. We're going to throw you in, into the deep end of the pool and see if you can swim. But don't worry. If you can't, there's a whole bunch of people in the deep end that are going to be there to help you. And it's uh, been a, a great experience. Uh, and we've certainly had quite the journey since. So in order to make this work, uh, we needed to leverage a global supply chain. Uh, there was no way that Bose was going to implement a quality management system in 90 days and actually do the design and development and manufacturing of this uh, you know, first medical device, a class one. So the strategy included a, a design outsourcing partner that could uh, take Bose input and design input and envelope it within their uh, compliant quality management system from a design perspective. And we actually used the same uh, company for, for contract manufacturing, which allowed us to leverage the providing of the device master record from the designer to the manufacturer without having to pull that information into Bose, control it, 
and then the, issue it to the contract manufacturer. So that was a key a strategic element that enabled our success. At the same time, uh, we had no quality management system that met the medical requirements and none of our electronic systems were validated. Uh, so we kind of had to go old school. And so we, we actually launched the product uh, in a, in a paper-based quality management system. We were concurrently uh, validating a number of our electronic systems, and those uh, validation activities actually uh, were finished within plus or minus a couple weeks of our initial launch, but it was old school paper. And I remember uh, we, we did all of our training for the quality management system in paper with a paper-based system, you know, an old Excel spreadsheet, training matrix, and we trained over 900 people and uh, established over 10,000 paper-based training records just as part of this whole process. So it was kind of crazy. Um, I inherited a, an existing team called Project Theo, and Theo was selected because Theodore Roosevelt uh, initiated the first steps to uh, launch what would become our current regulatory environment, FDA, et cetera. And we grew to have over 15 different work streams with over 75 participants in a core team that, that I was leading. And there was very uh, little medical experience. We took the 600 action items from the consultant. I reviewed every single one of them and we re-racked that down to about a 400 item action plan in an integrated project plan. And, you know, honestly, for the, for the, the, the next uh, two to three months, I, I met with people nonstop from six in the morning until six at night, just telling everybody what to do. And I had an excellent uh, program manager that was, I called her my brain, and she managed the integrated project plan. And we drove the accountability se sessions with the 15 different work stream leaders. And, uh, you know, I would come home at night and, uh, you know, my wife would try to talk to me and I would just hold my hand up and say, honey, no. And she would look at me and say, you know, you, you talk to people all day long at work and you don't have time for me. And I, I said, honey, no. <laughs> it was uh, one of the most intense things that I've ever done. And, um, you know, I'm no rookie to this. It wasn't like my first rodeo. I worked for a global contract manufacturer that had uh, 25 plants in 15 countries and uh, did about 13 different either green fields or commercial to medical conversion or acquisition. So I have had a lot of experience at transforming companies uh, and, and giving them their first uh, medical quality management system in order to launch, you know, uh, combination products, class two uh, products. But uh, all of them paled in comparison to the efforts that were required in order to make this one happen in a mere 90 days, because the fastest that I had done it before was probably nine months, and it's a good nine to 18 month initiative. And uh, we also, it, it, in conjunction with the class one product, we also needed to stand up a PLM system that could control early design and development deliverables in order to launch, you know, uh, tooling to support, you know, concept builds. So we were also working to uh, establish that PLM system for, for Bose here. So we in initially took steps to validate our SAP system, which is our ERP system, and our, our windshield platform. Uh, typically an SAP validation initiative is six months. Uh, we did ours in 14 weeks. Uh, you could probably say the same thing for a windshield system. And we, uh, we leveraged Windshield's SaaS platform because we could implement the SaaS platform, which is a cloud platform, uh, very quickly, it was pre-configured. And we set that up and we validated it uh, solely as a backup system to launch early design deliverables to, to support our Bose here class two, while we concurrently uh, initiated a validation initiative to validate our on-prem solution, uh, which was it's highly customized, a lot more complicated. And we're using the uh, windshield on-prem for our design history file and our quality management system. And uh, we also uh, 
upgraded that system after the initial validation, and we launched Windshield's medical version of their document control system with automated training. And that was absolutely huge. Um, Bose is a, a commercial company, and you know, in the medical division, we probably had a, a approximately 150 dedicated people, but we were leveraging uh, a large number of Bose uh, capabilities in their commercial realm. So the number of people that we had to train was huge. And as a commercial company, there was very little medical experience. So you can imagine the extent of training that was required. And this automated training application, it's uh, one of the best things that we've ever implemented. So the result, so we were able to validate our ERP system, SAP, the windshield SaaS solution, and our on-premise solution to meet the FDA requirements. Uh, we were able to deploy our quality management system and train over 900 people. We registered Bose with the FDA as a specification developer. We listed our first medical device, Bose Frames, with the FDA. And uh, we did all that in a 14-week uh, period. Uh, so Bose first medical device, Bose Frames, was launched all in less than a year. And uh, quite an accomplishment, something that, that we're very proud of. Moving forward, so what does the future hold? Uh, quality is a journey, and you're never able to implement everything all at once. So we're definitely using a phased approach and we, like most other companies, have been impacted significantly by the COVID issue and the financial crisis. So we're taking a more phased approach in terms of future windshield modules. So the first additional module that we're going to be deploying is the, the medical version the complaint module, which will be deployed in Q1 of 2021. And this is huge because it's our first foray into leveraging uh, Windshield's quality management system for the greater Bose beyond Bose Health and medical devices. So we're uh, configuring a safety process that is used by Bose for all of their various different divisions into the complaint management module. And that module will be used by the whole company to manage complaints that have a safety issue and uh, the medical uh, division will also be using that particular module to manage all of our complaints. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier and some of the accomplishments that uh, that we gained through the initial process was we had to set up a JIRA board and customize an automated process to handle our, our complaints. And we had to validate that JIRA tool. Uh, but we did it as a throwaway knowing that we would be implementing uh, an, an electronic version within Windchill, and uh, the, the Windchill version is definitely much more comprehensive. It, it's a great module, and again, one of the reasons we picked Windchill for EQMS is the the integration of all of these various tools. Having your design history tool, you know, your de device master record, your complaint management, your CAPA, your non-conforming material, all in a common system where all of the data is linked. Uh, is is very, very useful and not very common out there in industry with other competing applications. We're moving to uh, implement a new control of bill of material. And this uh, new control is going to leverage windshield our PTC SUMA capabilities. And it will enable our contract manufacturers to um, be a part of our extended digital thread. So our bill of materials will be managed by our contract manufacturers and be brought into Bose for Bose to review uh, requested changes. So the digital thread around our bill of materials and our control of our part numbers extends from uh, design all the way through to the contract manufacturer in one continuous thread. We're really excited about that. We're also excited about moving to a full track automated ECR ECN process uh, utilizing the uh, document control and design history file capabilities of Windchill. And what's really going to be cool about this is that we're going to include our medical change assessment criteria into the tool. It's going to eliminate a, 
a 10 to 12 page paper form that we fill out now anytime we want, want to make a change so we can do an appropriate change assessment. And it's going to electronify that, again, extending our digital thread through change control uh, connected to our bill of materials. And we're really excited about that. Uh, and then lastly, we'll be implementing the, uh, the design history file, NCMR, CAPA, and audit modules, which are additional medical modules in the PTC's suite in the 2021-2022 timeframe. And uh, we're really excited about the audit module because audits can be time consuming and we're, we're going to see a, a lot of efficiencies come out of that and improve compliance at a reduced cost. And uh, that will complete our, our journey in terms of implementing uh, any QMS strategy. Thanks, Eric. You always impress me with the stories and the and your capacity for for overcoming change challenges, as I would say. Uh, Eric and I, we've known each other for quite a while, and years ago we were sitting at a bar in a restaurant having a conversation about a vision of a, a fully integral quality management system. And roughly in a couple of years, it seemed like that Aberdeen had, had performed a study, and, and as you can see, from the slide here, there are advantages to having closed loop quality in PLM. And while Aberdeen gives a solid quantitative measurement of those advantages here on this screen, some some people still wonder if standalone systems are better. After all, don't those small independent providers have better focus? And my answer is, and, and has been with Eric for a long time, uh, the focus of building any product is to solve a customer problem. If your product only partially solves a problem or solves it only part of the time, you're not aligned with customer outcomes. And that's one of the, the things that came, that always comes through with Eric and came through today, I'm, I'm fascinated to listen to him always, is that he finds a way to make the things work so the outcomes can become possible. And, and so based upon our conversations and, and several uh, others of our friends, We've had um, the opportunity to create a quality system that, that matches kind of what this concept was that Aberdeen, Aberdeen came up with. Aberdeen recently has come up with an additional uh, element to this, which is PLM and quality in the digital thread. And, and some of the key takeaways uh, that, that were mentioned with this, it, senior executives view automation in the quality series as critical value driver. We just saw from, from Eric's presentation how much he was able to do with the training, tracking, and, and document control stuff. Uh, top companies also see major improvements in waste and cost reduction and a focus on quality. And, and then the technology and process maturity stand out as critical best practices. These were the key takeaways. But for me, what I see is Eric's company becoming best in class, like every other company that, I, that I've known him to be involved with. They take a platform approach to the design process to help generate, manage, and validate product variants, and ultimately better able to serve customers while they maintain the quality that they have. That's one of the, the beauties about working with Eric is he has vision into that, and, and that vision is needed for uh, today's both complex products, but also challenging environmental conditions and challenging engineering conditions where you've got geographically diverse operations or you have a very large supply chain. So the closed loop PLM based automated quality processes that, that we came up with can really help in this regard. PTC's quality by design solution follows the ISO 9001 quality management standard with a pre-configured set of PLM and quality processes. This approach allows for the support of industry-specific needs through the use of derivative standards. Each of those derivative standards requires the mandatory processes which, uh, which are enabled at the top level, but in the case of 1345, we're talking about ads for uh, quality such as DHF and DMR. Uh, this following 
uh, storyboard gives you a quick overview of what happens and how this is integrated throughout the product life cycle. First, you define the product, and you define it by using uh, electronic requirement systems. And then you use CAD models uh, and, and a model-based engineering approach to, to do a, uh, both high-level and detailed design. You can predict and perform risk and reliability analysis on, on these, and those are associated with the digital thread. Next, we validate um, the, using the requirements, the electronic requirements, and we use the critical to quality characteristics to generate control plans for manufacturing. We can then monitor and perform surveillance and corrective action using the, the risk and reliability information and FMEA codes, and uh, then compare and predict uh, what, what we have seen. We compare the predicted versus the actual that we find in the surveillance activities and finally we we promote those lessons learned uh, in the management review and improvement and the the core aspect of this is that the underlying components of any quality management system the foundational pieces are our control of, of the artifacts whether you're talking about SOP like in in our case the first thing that was implemented uh, that Eric put together was the document control system and then second, secondarily, the design control pieces with DHF and DMR. And so all, all this is intended to work together in a, in a closed loop quality system. And, and it's fascinating for me to see the work that Eric has done, how quickly he can go into any organization and modify uh, behavior to bring them both into compliance, but uh, reap the benefits of strong quality systems and with that maybe we could go to some questions and answers thank you for that great information a few of you have already submitted questions so we're going to jump right in while the presenters are answering your questions please take a moment to complete the feedback form that appears on the left hand side of your screen our first question is for you mike Mike, does the training tracking section of document control replace my LMS compliance wire? Uh, no, it's not intended to, to replace a learning management system. It's, it's intended to work in parallel to it. Uh, the, there is a REST web service that allows companies to integrate with LMS where they take the document change and, and move it over to the LMS system. Uh, and and then uh, the training curriculum for that document is organized and and sent back um, the score is sent back additionally it can be used without an lms system uh, because you can uh, just do a a read and certify type of thing uh, and then that that training record once that task is completed that training record is updated uh, in in the system the core component for this automated training tracking is to directly associate qualified roles to the documents so that when they're either created or they're modified, training can be tracked, organized and tracked via tasks in the workflow system in Winchell. Thank you, Mike. This next question looks like it's for you, Eric. Why did you select PTC? Well, that's a great question that has uh, a number of answers. Uh, technically, the completeness of the core quality processes and the use of CAD or MBE, model-based engineering, instead of paper-based design control was a, definitely a plus. Uh, secondarily, you know, I'm not a stranger to electronic quality management systems. I deployed my first one in the mid-90s. And in uh, 2000, the 2000s, I deployed uh, a web-based quality management system to 25 plants in 15 countries, and both of those systems were developed by myself with a team of developers. And so I'm quite familiar, and I've also looked at products that are commercially available on the marketplace, and they range from uh, you know, not too many really good ones to a whole lot of imposters that are more like ERP systems masquerading as an electronic quality management system. So I, I know what good looks like, and I know what logical looks like. And I remember uh, sitting down with Mike years ago, and, and he was 
laying out his plans for PTC's electronic quality management system. And I looked at it and it looked very familiar, like something that, that I would uh, make for myself. So I find that uh, their whole approach is very logical and it, it's really important because, you know, with human-based engineering and human error, you know, if a system isn't logical and rational and doesn't flow, people are gonna make mistakes. Um, and then the last reason is all of your engineering documentation is in the same system as all of your quality information. So it's one continuous digital thread. You don't have islands of information and it's uh, definitely positive for integration. Thank you, Eric. Uh, we'll take one more question at this time. And Eric, this it looks like this last question is for you. Can you explain how the training records reports are automated? I'd be happy to. So typically when you have a training system that isn't automated, you have one big huge Excel spreadsheet that has all the documents on one axis and all the people on the other. And you put X marks for people that need to be trained on various different documents. So the, uh, the application here does that automatically. So each document has a, a new tab, which allows us to record all the people who are to be qualified in that procedure. So that replaces that training matrix. And then whenever a, a document is revised and reissued or approved for the first time, an automated email goes out to all of the people that were in that tab, uh, generating a, a training task. So it totally automates the, um, the uh, you know, what we call the training matrix, and uh, it definitely cuts our costs. Uh, and it's just a, a huge enabler to ensuring that people are trained and obviously training in a regulated environment is paramount. Thank you.